Hey folks, in this episode I'm going to show you how to make this Nebula Environment World Shader in Blender. It's going to be quite a versatile node group. It produces some pretty awesome results, especially if you pair it with this Night Sky node group which I made in the previous tutorial. So if you haven't done that tutorial, I recommend following that tutorial as well. So without further ado, let's get to it. So the first thing I'll do is delete the default cube. I'll delete the default lamp. I'll then go up to edit over here, click preferences and go to add-ons and type in node and search for the node wrangler enable this add-on and then click these three buttons over here click save preferences and that will ensure that the node wrangler will load every time you load blender we'll just close this window we'll also go over to here to our render settings and under color management we're going to change the view transform to filmic i'll then clap that window there i'm going to take my cursor to the bottom left until i see this crosshair i'll then hold down my left mouse button drag this up until it's around about there. I am going to be making this in cycles, but you can make it in EV. It should work for both, so that's absolutely fine. I'm going to change this window to my shader editor. I'll hit N to close that window. I'll change it from object to world. If you don't see this here, just click use nodes or click new up here, and you should be left with this node group here, which is a background and a world output. I'm going to set the background strength to five. Let's just give it a color so we can see what we're doing. I'll then go to viewport shading. Excellent. I'm going to turn off my overlays. Don't need to see that at the moment. All right, let's get cracking. So the first node I'll add will be a noise texture. We're actually going to have quite a few of these, six in total. So I'm going to hit shift A, add texture, and we go for noise texture. I'm going to set this to 4D. I'm going to keep the scale at five. I'm going to turn the detail all the way up to 15. I'm going to keep the lacking narrow set to 2 and I'll set the distortion to 1. I'll then hit shift D. I'm going to drag it down here and for this one I'm going to set the scale to 1. I'm going to set the lacunarity to 1 and I'll set the distortion to 0. I'll then hit shift D. I'm going to pop this up here. I'll then take this one. I'll hit shift D. I'm going to pop this down here. I'll then hit shift A, add color and we go for mix color. I'm going to change the mix type to overlay and I'm going to take the color from this noise texture into socket A and the color from this noise texture into socket B. I'm going to turn the factor all the way up to one and I'll plug the result from the overlay into the color of the background. It's all white at the moment, so we're going to have to add a gamma node. So that's shift A, add color, and we go for gamma and we'll pop that in between there. Maybe we can set this to five. So now that we've got the node wrangler add-on enabled, I'm going to click this noise texture here. I hit control T. We're going to be using the generated coordinates for this. Hit G and I'll just drag these across over to here. I'll also plug the vector from the mapping node into this noise texture here. I'm going to hold down shift and my right mouse button and I'm going to strike through. And again, that's another feature of the node wrangler. The W factor on this noise texture is going to be four and the W factor on this noise texture is also going to be four. The W factor for this one will be 2.5 and again the W factor for this one is going to be 2.5. I'll then plug the color from this noise texture into the vector of this noise texture and I'll do the same for this one. So we'll add another two noise textures. So I'm going to hit shift A texture and we go for noise texture. I'll pop that down here. We're going to change this to 4D. I'm going to set the scale to 2.5. I'm going to turn the detail all the way up and I'm going to change the distortion to 0.25. I'll then hit shift D and pop that over here. And for lacunarity on this one, I'm going to change to three and I'll set the distortion to zero. Again, we're going to be using a mapping node with the generated coordinates, but I actually want a separate mapping node for this one. So I'm going to select this mapping node. I'm going to hit shift D, bring that across down to there and I'll plug the generated coordinates into there. We'll then drag this vector into the vector of this noise texture and the color from this noise texture into the vector of this noise texture. I'm going to set the W factor on these to a random number 1248. Sounds good to me. I'll then hover my cursor over here and hit control C to copy and hover my cursor over here and hit control V to paste. Let's just neaten up this node structure quickly. So I'm going to select this noodle point and hit control X and that will dissolve that noodle point. So now we need to mix this factor in with these group of nodes up here. I'll hit shift A color and we go for mix color. I'm going to pop that mix color in between the gamma node and the background. Unplug the gamma from socket A and plug it into socket B. I'll then select the color in socket A and I'm going to turn that to a black color. I'll plug the factor from this noise texture into the factor of the color mix. I'll hit shift A, add converter and we go for color ramp. I'll pop that into there. I'll select this flag and I'm going to change it to black. We're going to have five flags in total. So I'm going to click this plus button three times till we've got three flags. Just drag this across quick. I'm going to set this first flag to 0.6. I'm going to set this flag to 0.1. 
Let's just drag this over, make sure that's on point 0.1. Yep. I'm going to set this middle flag to 0.35. I'll select this flag and set this to 0.4. I'll select this flag and set this to 0.3. I'll then select the middle flag. I'm going to change this to a white color and I'm going to change it from linear to B spline. So now we're getting the effect that we want. Excellent. We'll just drag this back up. I'll add one more node, Shift A, Converter, and we go for Math. We're going to keep it set to Add, but this top value I'll set to 2.5, and the bottom value I'm going to set to 4. I'm going to take the value from this Add node into the W factor of this noise texture, and I'll take the value into the W factor of this noise texture. So we need to add a couple more nodes. So I'm going to hit Shift A, Converter, and we go for Vector Math. I'm going to change it from Add to Scale. I'm then going to select the X, Y, and Z, and type in 1. So it's a scale of one. I'll then hit Shift D and we'll duplicate that. We'll just put it over here for now. And I'm going to take this scale vector and plug it into the scale of this mapping node. And I'll take this scale vector and plug it into the scale of this mapping node. Okay, I'm just checking everything looks good before we put this in a group. I'll box select all of these nodes here minus the background node and the world output. I'm then going to hit Control G to group and we can start connecting these up now. So I'll grab this group input node just bring it up to here for now and I'll connect this top socket from this add node into the group input there. I'm going to take the W factor from this noise texture and plug it into the same socket and I'll take the W factor from this noise texture and I'm going to plug that into the same socket. I'm then going to hit N to open up my N panel and over here where it says value I'm going to rename this to color seed and then just drag this across over here. I'm then going to take this scale factor from this vector scale and plug it into the bottom socket and we're going to rename this to color scale. I'll just drag this down a bit, down to about here. We're going to take this scale factor from this vector scale, plug it into the bottom socket and we're going to rename this to formation scale. I'm going to change these two W factors here, so I'm going to set them to 500. And then we'll drag these W factors into the bottom socket of the group input node. Both plug into the same socket and we're going to rename this to formation seed. Just checking everything is correct. Okay, so I'm going to hit N to close that side panel. I'm going to hit tab to go out of the node group. I'm going to drag this up here and I'll rename this node group to nebula environment. Excellent. So the color seed, we change this going to change the colors it's going to give a random seed every time you move this I quite like it it's set to 2.5 I like the purples and the blues the color scale is going to be the size of the noise pattern for the colors so if I turn this up you'll see what I mean there you go the formation scale is going to be the scale of the actual formation itself so I can turn that up, you can see that the formations are changing scale and the formation seed it will generate a different pattern every time you move this so you can see it's generating different patterns. And now if you want to combine that with the night sky that we made, we just append the night sky node group. So I'm going to hit F4, click append. I'll locate the blend file where I've got my starry night sky environment shader. I'm going to go to node tree and I'm going to click night sky because that's what I saved it as. I'll just append that and then I'll hit shift A, go to group and night sky. If you haven't got this, members can download it from my Patreon or you can follow my previous tutorial. I'll then hit shift A, we go for color and mix color. I'll pop that into here. The nebula environment is going to be the bottom socket. The night sky is going to be the top socket. I'm going to change the factor to one and I'm going to set it to add. So now we've got our nebula and our night sky. I hit numpad zero to go into camera view. Maybe I can change my focal length. So I'm going to select my camera. I'm going to go to my camera settings over here. I'll change my focal length to 18 mil. So we get a nice wide angle shot. I might even change the formation scale to 0.75. Maybe I can tone the blue down a bit on my sky color. So I'm going to hit 0.5 for sky color. I should tone down the blue. Maybe I'll turn down the brightness of the nebula itself. So I'm going to turn the factor down to 0.75, reduce the mix a bit. I want to change the formation seed. So I'm not really happy with what I'm seeing on the screen. It's getting quite wild there. So it's just finding a seed that you like. I might reduce my star scale to 500 and maybe I'll turn the star count down to 0.8 and then I'll hit F12. Just to show you this works in Eevee, I'm going to go to my render engine, I'm going to switch it to Eevee and I'm going to click over here on compositing, I'm going to click use nodes, we just do a bit of compositing quick. So I go to layout, I'm going to hit F12, there's the result, 
Now I'll quickly flick over to compositing again. We just do a bit of basic compositing to make this look a bit better. So I'm going to hit Shift A, filter, we go for glare. I'm going to pop that into here. I'm going to turn the mix factor all the way to one and the threshold to 0.1. I'll then hit Shift D, I'll duplicate that node. I'll hit Shift A, go to color, mix and mix color. Pop that in there, I'm going to change it to add. I'll then take the image from the original render into this bottom socket here of this glare node and I'll pop this into here. And all that's done is basically added itself onto itself. But for this one, I'm going to change the angle offset to 45 degrees and I'm going to change the fade distance to, let's say, 0.85. So the streaks on the 45 degree angle are slightly less. Maybe we can add a glare node in there as well. So I'm gonna hit Shift A, filter, and we go for glare. And we're gonna change it from streaks to fog glow. Just plug that into one of these sockets and I'll plug the result into the socket of the other glare node. And I'm gonna turn the threshold down to 0.1. There we go, they're a bit brighter now. I'm gonna add another glare node. So I'm gonna select this glare node. I'm gonna hit Shift D, we'll duplicate that and we'll pop that into here. I'll then hit Shift A and we'll go for filter, blur and choose blur. I'll pop that into here. I'm gonna change it from Gaussian to fast Gaussian. We'll select relative and I'm gonna give it an X and Y of 0.15. So we'll blur these a bit, excellent. I'll just drag the composite node and viewer node across here. I'll then select this color mix node set to add. I'm going to hit shift D and I'm going to pop it at the end of the chain, but I'll plug this into the bottom socket and I'm going to plug the original image output into the top socket. Maybe I can reduce the blur a bit. So I'm going to set it to 0.1. So it's a bit sharper. I might turn the factor down on this add node to 0.5 just to reduce these streaks. Okay. That's a bit better. Maybe I can add a bit of vignette. So this is quite a good way of adding vignette to your images. You can either use a box mask or a eclipse mask. So I'm going to hit shift A. We go for mask and I'm going to choose eclipse mask. With your eclipse mask selected, you get this box here and we can adjust the parameters and visually see whereabouts the mask is going to be. Just drag this over to here. I'll then hit shift A, color, and we go for color mix and we'll choose mix color. I'm going to pop that into there. I'm going to change this to multiply. I'll then plug the mask into the bottom socket. I'll then hit shift A, add filter. We go for blur and blur. Pop this in between the eclipse mask node and the color mix node set to multiply. I'm going to change it from Gaussian to fast Gaussian, change it to relative, and maybe we'll give it a blur value of 15%. I'm going to change it from multiply to overlay, just so it's a softer edge. Excellent. Maybe we can adjust the size of the mask as well. So I'm just taking it right to the edge. I'm leaving a bit of gap though. Now if I go to rendering, I'm going to select my viewer node and that's the result. Like the previous tutorial, we can make a 360 degree render of this, but we have to do that in cycles. With your camera selected, switch to cycles. We'll go to sampling. We're going to deactivate denoising for both viewport and render. I'm going to click light paths. I'm going to turn down all the bounces for diffuse, glossy and transmission. We're going to deactivate reflective and refractive core sticks and maybe I'll set a maximum sample rate of 256. You should be able to get away with 64. We then go to our camera data properties over here. We change it from perspective to panoramic and from fisheye to equire rectangular and under our output to render out a 360 degree image. The X resolution has to be double compared to the Y resolution. So for example, if your X resolution was 5,000 pixels, your Y resolution will be 2,500 pixels. I would go for a minimum of 8,000 by 4,000, but I'm gonna render out in 16K. So I'm gonna choose 16,000 by 8,000. Before you click render, go to compositing, turn off use nodes. I'm going to go back to layout. I'm going to go back to my render tab. I'm actually going to turn my sample rate down to 64. I might turn the strength up to 10 just so we got some brighter clouds in the scene here. As a result of turning this up, I'm going to have to adjust my sky color. So I don't want that to be too bright. So now it's simply a case of hitting F12 to render out that 360 degree environment texture. So now that that's rendered, 
I'm going to click image up here I'm going to click save as and I'm going to change it from a PNG to open EXR to full float and I'm going to change the codec from zip lossless to DWAA lossy and that will ensure that the file remains small while still retaining the high dynamic range I'm going to save it as nebula environment in a folder called subscribe thanks folks you absolute legends so click save image as I then close this window I then hit control and right mouse button strike through and with the background selected I'm going to hit control T I'll then navigate to the open EXR file nebula environment EXR I'll then open that image I'm going to set the strength to 1 for now I'll just change it from cycles to EV I'll then go into a rendered view and there we have our HDR and the reason that the strength is set to 1 is because we've got quite a lot of high dynamic range with this image of course you can add colour ramps, hue saturation values and gamma nodes to get the look that you're going for to where it's an open EXR we've retained the high dynamic range while keeping the file size small and the reason I do it this way and render out a 360 degree environment texture is because your render times will be significantly reduced whereas if you use these node groups here for example just plug that in put 10 back in if you use these it has to calculate all the procedural noise textures and that takes time to calculate so if you render it out as a 360 degree environment texture and use that instead that way your renders will render out a lot faster but of course keep these node structures because you might want to change the settings you might want a different look so for example I might change my formation seed I might change the color scale and the color seed to get a different look so I might want to render that out as a 360 degree environment texture so yeah, you just play with these nodes until you've got something that you like. Render it out as a 360 degree image texture, as I showed you, from changing your camera type from perspective to panoramic and from fisheye to equi rectangular. And also don't forget to change your resolution so that X is double the Y. So I'm done with this for now. So I'm going to go back to my camera data. I'm going to change it back to perspective. I'll go to my output and I'm going to change it to... 1920 by 1080 back to the normal resolution let me just delete these nodes here i don't need them in my scene anymore just a quick note i have made one last edit to this i forgot to add this in select your nebula environment you tab into edit mode and i've added this gamma node here this was the original node setup and all i've done is i added this gamma node so that's shift a go to color gamma and it'll add this node and then you basically pop it in between this color ramp and this mix color so you pop it in between there you then drag the gamma factor and you drop it into the bottom socket of the group input node and i've renamed it to formation contrast so then when i tab out of edit mode you can change the contrast of the formations with this button here because the default value was set to one so i've actually got mine set to 1.5 and you can change it depending on how your scene looks but i think this looks quite good so i just go to my compositing or enable that go to layout go to viewport shading so I'm going to change it back to cycles. You can choose EV. I'll then hit F12. If your compositor is overpowered, we just close this window. You go to compositing and then we go to this one. I'm going to change it to 0.15. There we go. That's a bit better. That's all for now, folks. Have a great day. Level up. And thanks for watching.